Hi, my name is Ian Roberts and welcome to this second weekly series on composition. I'm going to spend this week and perhaps the next two or three weeks on what I think is the single most important foundational principle in strong composition. Imagine, just to begin with, you were watching a football game or a soccer game or a tennis match and the players were only allowed to move back and forth in a linear way. They weren't allowed to move sideways at all. The match or the game would be ridiculous, wouldn't it? But because they can move left and right, back and forth, the entire field or court gets used. And that's what we want to do with our picture plane, with our canvas or our paper. Engage the entire thing. Now the horizon, or the horizontal part, is kind of a given because of balance and gravity. We always know where it is. But in a landscape, you can imagine, say, a line of clouds, a line of hills, a line of trees, a line of fields, a line of bushes. There's lots of horizontals. It's engaging the vertical that is so fundamental. So this week and the next couple of weeks, both in the photograph and in the historical image, we're going to be analyzing that one idea. Because as I say, I think it's probably the single most foundationally important principle in strong composition. And I just wanted to mention that in my book, Mastering Composition, and Edgar Payne, and you know, lots of people have mentioned this idea of different compositional structures, like an O, or an S, or an L. And to my mind, lots of students find themselves getting hung up on that and it actually causes more problems than it solves. And I think this one idea of the horizontal and the vertical actually includes everything engaged in O's and S's and L's and makes it a much simpler concept to put into practice. So we're going to look at the, photo at the photograph first. So in this photograph, if you notice the left-hand side, there is a whole series of horizontals. And I think at a certain point, it's already told us everything it needs to say, so we could crop that out. And then we look at it, and we look at the top left, at those sort of thin poplar trees, and there's some very strong darks and lights up there that are very distracting from allowing our eye to come down into the middle, into the bulk or the center of the image. So let's fill those in. And if I were painting that, that's exactly what I'd do. I'd just fill that thing in black like this, or dark like this, so that my attention is being released from that part down into the, middle of the, into the middle of the image. And then let's just try one a little tighter. And then we think, ah, that's getting a little claustrophobic. It's a little too tight. So this one we could say is the Goldilocks idea, just about right. So I'm just going to look at it in terms of doing a drawing and analyzing the horizontal and the vertical. So this now is pretty much a square. And when you look at that, we can see the horizon is up about here. And then there's a line, you know, the bottom of the trees and all those things coming in about here. But you can see that right about the dead center, there's a big tall vertical here and something always has to be in the center. But that thing is uh, got other verticals around it that are sort of taking the not it doesn't become the most important thing there. This tree here is probably we're going to call the center of interest. And then there's these beautiful lines of grasses coming in here, these pale grasses, these dark grasses, deep grasses here, and then of course the vineyard taking us in, you know, something like that. Now, the darkest dark right now is probably right in here. And I would be inclined, that being pretty much dead center, uh, to take this group of trees and bushes here, sort of a couple of them, and just take this a little darker on this side and have this light coming out. And then that little patch of grasses there is a little bit more intense. And then, of course, these could be slightly more intense too just to rivet our attention right there at the interplay of the horizontal and vertical. This is a painting by Sargent. It's not a commission. It's of his niece. It's in the National Gallery in Washington. It's 30 inches wide, done in 1911. And this is sort of his late style. You can just see it in the kind of 
beautiful slashing brush marks that he's got here. Particularly confident. and I mean, he's just, he's such a marvel to look at. Look at these things. Just, God, they're so beautifully painted. But structurally speaking, look at the horizontal, obviously, we have across here. That is interplaying with a very strong vertical here. And what's interesting is this line here, another horizontal, is acting, acting as a framing device, even though there's some hor uh, vertical here. This horizontal is acting as a framing device that pushes our attention to this point and then allows just this much tension to be happening between top and bottom in order to complete that sense of horizontal and vertical. There's also a very interesting horizontal here of a kind of pink. Overall, we've got a green theme, we could say, with these three pink areas here, here, and say on the lips. So it's interesting, this line, this horizontal that comes right into the head. But what I find interesting is the big triangle, you could say this way, kind of takes a lump. But what's really cool, taking us obviously to the head and the interplay between the horizontal and the vertical, those things, okay, we understand. But also, there's a really interesting thing happening here with a secondary triangle. So we could say this is the first triangle leading to here. And then a secondary triangle to the head with this other triangle right here. And I'd love to know how intentional that was or whether he, she sat down and it was almost there and he rearranged the cloth a little bit and bingo, it was there. It's just, it's gorgeous. But what's interesting too is how hard that edge is to hold our attention to the very place of the center of interest compared to that edge just on the other side of the head and the hair. It's such a beautiful painting. So I hope you found that engaging. Um, maybe as an exercise you could look at some of your art books, uh, maybe well-known historical artists to begin with, and look at how they're using the vertical in the picture plane. One thing is if you find a painting with a great big area with no horizontal in it, but a gradation like this, that gradation is actually a design element that pushes us from dark to light. And so it actually is an aspect of the vertical. So uh, if you've got a comment or an idea for the series, you could put it down below. Otherwise, I'll see you next week. Bye for now. Have a great week.